and the questions. Oh, you got questions? I do. Why didn't you let me see them before? You know, I could have That's prepared. Test, I mean, keeps you on your. I know it. I shape. I know it. You know. All right. Well, we'll go. You know. Hopefully, I can do it in a lot less time than Carl. Uh, <laughs> Carl Castle. You know. <laughs> Uh, Jim Sampson, S-A-M-P-S-O-N, 1991 to 1997. We were here during the territory, here when it became a state, but we left for Maine. That's where my dad and mom or families are originally from, the state of Maine. And then uh, he came back, he worked on the dew line, and then as a family, we moved from Maine to Alaska in a 1960 Ford Falcon. You know, we didn't have an, a lot of extra walking around money growing up as kids. We, we were taken care of. My dad did a great job. He had an older sister who did a good job. When I was going to school, it was working and getting enough money to go to school. and you know, I remember my first air, airplane flight I ever was on. It was a Wien jet to Prudhoe Bay in 1969 to work on the North Slope one year after oil was discovered to get enough money to go to college. Growing up here and living in Fairbanks, those that know me uh, would remember my time as a union representative during the Trans-Alaska Pipeline. So I worked about seven years construction and going to school and, and then when the Trans-Alaska Pipeline came, I went to work for labor and I represented construction workers for 10 years or 12 years. 1991 is when everybody was filing for mayor. You know, I had a number of people talking to me about it, but I just got out of a public job, you know, in the labor department and uh, never really gave it any thought. Then I got a call from a lady named Grace Scheibel, who I served with and uh, she was the uh, attorney general. And I think this was in July, end of July, you know, in the elections in October. She said, Jim, you need to run for borough mayor. Of all the candidates, I had a 35% name recognition. Um, way, way at the bottom going in, you know, like only one third of the people knew who I was, whereas the others had been in the public line like for you know, the last number of years, so. Had the right people around me, had a good base. I uh, was able to raise money to mount a campaign. And, uh, well, I got elected. Other people can judge my accomplishments, you know, the, the commute over, over the years, but I think successes that I may have had in that position in two terms uh, have a lot to do with just building relationships. You know, our, my, my efforts, if you go back, if you ask me where was my interest, how did he do in those areas in which, you know, he showed a, a big interest, I would, I would say I enjoyed just building things. You know, starting something and finishing something. But we needed to put together the regional solid waste plan. You know, that's kind of boring to a lot of people, but you know, it has to be done. But we, had, we developed a regional solid waste plan that they're still using today, 30 years ago. When I was growing up in Alaska, bars would open at eight in the morning and close at five. You'd have about three hours to sober up. You know, and when I was younger, I probably had a few beers, you know, late. But I thought it was good public policy to just take a look at that. I've had people talking to me about it, so I, Put a uh, worked with the city and put a compromise together. And had the assembly pass a reduction of bar hours from five o'clock to two o'clock. You know, during the weekdays and three thirty on the weekends. That was sort of a compromise with bar owners. You know, a few bars I couldn't go into for a little while. You know, until they calmed down a little bit. But uh, that's all good. You know. 
Another thing, we bought the borough building. We, we had a triple net lease with the developer of the borough building and resolutions of the dispute, we ended up buying the building. You know, it saved $850 million a year. And when I left office, I went back to work with labor with the Alaska State AFLCO. Served five years on the Alaska Permanent Fund Board of Trustees. One year I chaired the, the Permanent Fund Board. I left labor and I came back to Fairbanks. I retired in 2016. I spent 10 years, you know, building or raising money, putting a group together to build the uh, Fairbanks Pipeline Training Center, which is located off Van Horn. My interest there goes back to the pipeline days when I was a young construction worker. Because of my time back during the pipeline, what could I do to, to, to uh, train up Alaskans? And you know, what can we do to, to give opportunities to those in rural Alaska to work on these projects as well, not just those that live in urban Alaska? So to me, you know, jobs are kind of important to me. It's all about how many people from Fairbanks are you going to employ? Pretty simple. As, as an outgoing mayor or outgoing governor, you know, they, they spend the last couple of weeks trying to, you know, trying to get things done. I was no different. Probably the last day I probably had meeting upon meeting upon meeting. Uh, can't remember all the meetings. I think that one was uh, signing uh, uh, an agreement with the United States Army uh, to expand Birch Hill Ski. Uh, might have had a meeting with the pioneers uh, regarding Alaska land, as it was called then. The city had Alaska land. They, they walked away from it, gave it to the borough, and, and uh, we put some money in there to maintain the facilities, new roofs, sewer, water. Uh, just equipment, vehicles for our staff to use. Uh, set aside land for future parks and rec projects, whether it's soccer fields, baseball fields. So, so I'm kind of an Alaska land guy, but I didn't realize till I read an article in the paper within the last year that the pioneers originally that was all pioneer pioneers of Alaska land. And they gave that land, 40 acres or something, if I remember correctly, to the borough to build A67 with the understanding that they would have an office there. But probably one of the last things I did was put the first team together to look at the value of the pipeline. And, uh, and Hank Hove carried that on. And, uh, and so did, uh, I think, Jim Whitaker and Luke and Carl, all the mayors after me. but. Uh, the state assessed the value of the pipeline, still do today, and uh, it was declining rapidly. We were losing a lot of money, you know, over a million dollars a year on the way the state assessed that line. So we, we kind of put a group together to take a look at that, and then Hank Hove came in, and he's since passed away, unfortunately. And then that was carried on, and I think today, uh, through the work of Mayor Whitaker and Hopkins, I think, and Carl Castle. Uh, the courts have ruled that in favor of the borough on some of those assessment issues on the mainline pipeline that travels through the borough. So they've all done a good job, I think. But yeah, just boom, 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 trying to get done. Cause you know, the next day, you know, you're not, you don't have that ability to, you know, you know, I mean, outside of that, I've got six grandkids, so. You know, I got hockey games, swimming, volleyball, soccer, those things go to. But I also spend a lot of time on the Salt River. I hunt and fish. But yeah, that's sort of enjoying life. You know, I get up every day, you know, and just getting up is a pleasure. <laughs>